ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My brothers Allah has given us the most perfect of creation and he has completed this creation in the best of manners and from this creation he has given us things to look at so that we can appreciate the beauty of his creation and we can enjoy his creation and from them he says al mal wal banun your wealth and your children zinatul hayat al dunya they make your life in the dunya pleasurable it's something that you enjoy something that you have pleasure in but at the same time it being pleasurable it being enjoyable it being beautiful it beautifying your lives he also says that it's a test for us and we are a test for one another he says inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna your family your wealth your wealth and your family are a test for you wallahu inna hu ajrun azim and if you pass that test allah will recompense you with a great reward but unfortunately today there's more fitna than beauty there's more troubles than there is enjoyment our children they are losing their religion our children they're losing their intellect they're losing their morals they're losing their families and this is all driven by their desires Allah says in the Quran wala tattabi al hawa don't follow your desires because if you follow your desires fa yudillak an sabilillah you will be misguided from the path of Allah which he has made you for the desires and the fitna that they face in their little communities in their group of friends on their mobile phones a lot of it stems from the inter- entertainment that they enjoy some of it is sports some of it is music some of it is not entertainment some of it is clothes and worldly desires but arguably the biggest one stems from the ideological attack that they're facing in the entertainment of their house the music and the movies and if you look at the movies all of the movies are being based on one of the major sins in Islam there's no movie that will be a success except that the whole core foundation of it is to glorify some kind of major sin and the biggest one we find is when you have a man and he has special powers and he can fly or he is extra strong and he can pick up things that other humans can't do or he can see through walls or he can make something cold or hot using his body my brothers and sisters there are other ways that these kind of characters come as well where a man forms to become a, a, an insect and a man or animal and a man at the same time and because of this he's given these attributes and these are the attributes that belong only to your lord the one who created you this is what allah says in the quran wa dhal ladhin yulhiduna fi asma'i wa 
time of the Prophet Sallallahu they denied Allah having names and attributes. So Allah says, leave those people. So it's part of your Tawheed is to affirm these names and attributes only for your Lord. He is the all-seeing. He is the all-powerful. He is the one who can create. Not that man can create and form himself with another animal or create himself to be something better than he actually is. Nabas says that this ayah refers to those people also who make shirk with Allah's names and attributes. So what they did is they got the name of Al-Aziz that belongs only to Allah. They made an idol called Uzz. Allah, one of his names is Al-Mannan. What they did is they took this name and they gave it to one of their idols and they called him a name. Manat. And this is what's in our movies, and this is what our children are watching, and this is what they are wearing, and this is the pajamas that they have, and the clothes that they have. But if you step away from this, there are other movies. Let's watch an action movie. What's the premise of an action movie? Killing. Innocent people. The person who kills is glorified, because this is the plot. But one of the major sins in Islam that will not be forgiven, killing other people innocently. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's just relax. Most of these comedies are based on the idea of zina. There has to be a plot which will attract the genders. And the list goes on, my brothers. But one of the biggest things that Ibn al-Qaim says, one of the biggest things that shaitan will trap you with is music. One of the biggest things that he will come and open the doors to all evil, music. This is historically proven. Whenever somebody wanted to conquer a land, they will throw in their music and they will throw in their women. So that the enemy will become distracted. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says to Iblis, Delude whoever you want. Amaze whoever you want from the creation with your voice with your voice. Entice them with your voice. And the ulama of Tafsir have said, your voice, meaning Iblis' voice, refers to music. The music that our children are listening to is creating these desires in them. It's creating their hearts to be hard. It's creating them to leave Sabir in that we talked about earlier. But unfortunately, I mean, there may be people here listening to this khutbah, but there may be people who are not even in this khutbah. And we will say, I am happy with my life like this. I am still a Muslim, but I'm happy to watch music, uh, movies, and I'm happy to listen to music, I'm happy to do all these desires. It makes me happy. Coming to the masjid doesn't make me happy. Whether they will admit it or they won't admit it, this is what's happening. Leave me alone, I'm happy. My life is good. Ibn Taymiyyah has a very good answer to this. And he brings a very interesting example from Surah Yusuf, who was a young man himself in the story. He says, Whenever you feed your desires and your life becomes about desires, then your heart becomes enslaved to those desires. When you wake up in the morning, you're not thinking about the reason why you are here. You're not thinking about your Lord. You're not thinking about doing something which is responsible. All you are thinking about is about how to satisfy these desires. You may go to work, etc. But even when you're at work, even when you're at college, even when you're at school, all you're thinking about is your desires. And it's made even easier now when they have mobile phones. But the true one who is free is the one who attaches himself to Allah. Because he is not entrapped by his desires. He is enslaved to the one who created him. And the one who created him wants to have mercy on him and wants to give him freedom. And the proof for this whole concept is when the wife of Aziz in Surah Yusuf called Yusuf and said, Come, I want to do something that only a man can do with his wife. He said, Ma'adullah, I cannot do this. He's a Nabi of Allah. He is pure. He is sincere. I can't do this. So she said, if you don't do this with me, I will throw you in prison. What did Yusuf say? He didn't supplicate, Ya Allah, save me from prison, Ya Allah. He said, Rabbi, as 
أحب إلي مما يدعونني إليه. Prison is better for me than what she is calling me to do. Ibn Taymiyyah says, the reason why he wants to be in prison, or would prefer being in prison, because if he, even if he is in prison, even if his body is restricted, his heart is not connected to desires. His heart remains connected to his creator, Al-Wahid al qahar But if he is outside, not only will his body be completely tempted by this woman, his heart will also be entrusted to these desires. It's very easy for him to fall into this fitna. And this is the time we're living in today. Our children are going through this. But unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, it's not just our children. It's not just our children. So parents, they come, they say, my 18-year-old son, he's into drugs. He's in the gang and he's in prison. Oh, my daughter is doing something that I don't like. She's 19, 20 years old. She doesn't listen to me anymore. The problem started not with your child wanting to do bad. The problem started when the parent and the child didn't really give attention to this point that we're talking about from the very beginning. So if you give your child a cartoon that's full of shirks to watch when he's five years old, what's going to happen? What kind of upbringing is he going to have? If you give him his desires when he's 13, 14 years old, not any good terbiyah, what happens? And unfortunately, in some households, they do it together. They watch a movie together. They go to the cinema together, they listen to music together. So what's going to happen? Who is to blame? And this is why Ibn Qayyim said that most people are Sibian. People by default, doesn't matter how old you are, you're young, you're old, your intellect is not mature. And this is what we find, 30, 40, 50 years old, they're going to the cinemas with their children, watching shit in front of them, watching people kill each other in front of them, not teaching them the Quran, not teaching them the Sunnah, not teaching them how to be a responsible adult. إِلَّا مَنْ بَلَغَ مَبْلَغَ Except, Ibn Qayyim says, except the only way that you can free yourself from this fitna, from this entrapment of shaitan, if you become a man who is aqil al somebody who is intellectual, somebody who has wisdom. And the only way you can do this, when he has haq, when he seeks the haq, when he seeks knowledge, ilman wa when he seeks the truth in his religion and he practices it. This is the only way. The only way that we can resolve the situation that's going on in ourselves as individuals, in our houses and our communities. My brothers and sisters, we have to look also as to how we have been created. Like we said, there are many people who feel that they can carry on fulfilling their desires and they can carry on fulfilling whatever they want to do. It doesn't really matter on my relationship with my family. They might have it nice with their family. Some of them don't even have it nice with their family. But you have to realize, my brother, my son, my uncle, where did you come from? Why are you here? Are you here to fulfill your desires? Are you here to listen to music and do your drugs and do all the things that Allah has prohibited you from? He is the one who has created you from nothing and given you a chance, a single cell he has created you from. Not only that, he put that cell into your parents. And, and your parents continue to give you tarbiya and nurture you and educate you and sustain you and maintain you. So when you become old enough, it's a test for you as a child. Are you going to repay them or are you not? And in the akhirah, those who have a good connection with their Lord and with their families together will be successful. But you have to realize, as young men, as young adults, as uncles, as brothers, what's going to happen on that day? How are you going to be with your family? The only way you can be secure with your family on that day is if you're secure in the dunya upon in hidayah. Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ min akhi. His brother, he grew up playing with, he grew up having laughs with and jokes with, and he was his best friend. He will run away from him on that day. It's severe. My mom, my father, I don't want to know you this day. Can you imagine that? She bore you for nine months. Your father went out, maybe had two jobs supporting you, raising you, taking you to school every morning. 
But on that day, if you are not successful, mother and father, please leave me alone. My wife, my children, everybody, leave me alone. I am scared on this day. And then after this position, on that day, what will happen? Either he will get his book in the right hand, or either he will get his book on the left hand. Those people who get their book on the left hand, Allah says in the Quran, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِ Those people who get their book on the left hand, behind their back. فَصَوْفَ يَدْعُوْ ثُبُورًا He will say, I am destroyed. What have I done? وَيَسْلَى سَعِيرًا He will be pushed to the fire. Why? What's the reason? Allah gives us the reason. إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا With his family, with his children, with his parents. It's relaxing. Desires. Let's listen to music. Let's eat haram. Let's go on holidays. He was happy in the dunya with his family. There was no hidayah as a family, as a household. And now you're getting pushed to the fire individually. You're not going to know each other and you're going to get pushed to the fire. But those households that are full of hidayah, that are full of guidance, that are full of tarbiyah, full of khair, good actions and in. What does Allah say about them? Allah gives you, gives you glad tidings. It gives you motivation. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ They get a book in the right hand. فَصَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا He's not going to stand in front of Allah for a long time. Allah is going to say, this is your book, go to Jannah. And then what will happen? Allah gives a reason why he was giving his book in the right hand. Allah is giving a reason why he's going to Jannah. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا He will be with his family and they will all be happy. But the description between you and your family in relationship carries on in the Quran once you enter Jannah. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ Those people who believe when they enter to Jannah, they will say, where is my son? Where is my father? Where is my grandson? بِإِيمَانْ أَلْحَقْنَاهُمْ بِذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ Allah will say, we will give you your children and we will join you together in your Jannah. And the ulama of tafsir have said, it could be it could be that your father is in a much higher place, or even your son is in a much higher place in Jannah. But from his rahm, from his mercy, he will put you together. Even though if you don't deserve to be in that higher state. That's only if your relationship is strong in the dunya. That's only if Allah gives you tawfiq in the dunya to have the hidayah. The conversation doesn't stop there, my brothers. Surah Tur, Allah continues. After they are safe, after they are both in a higher level that they can possibly get to, after they are there with their families, what will they say to each other? Imagine, are you saying this in the dunya? This is what I'm asking you, my brothers. Are you saying this in the dunya with your wife, with your mother, with your son, with your grandfather? They will say to them, They will face each other, they will ask. In the dunya, we were scared. We were scared of this day. We were petrified. We didn't know if Allah was going to be happy with us or not. فَمَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَيْنَا وَوَقَانَا أَذَابُ الصَّنُونَ Allah has preferred us. Me and you. My mother, my father, my son. We are safe, alhamdulillah. Because of Allah's favor. وَوَقَانَا أَذَابُ الصَّنُونَ He didn't put us in that blazing fire. إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلُ فِي أَهْلِ we used to supplicate to Allah that He saves us. He is the one who is merciful. He is the one who shows compassion. And He has answered our dua, we are safe on this day. My brothers and sisters, as you can see, your relationship in this dunya with your mother, with your father, is very, very important. It's not something to be taken lightly. Because this is going to set your akhirah. Are you going to get your book on the right hand? Are you going to be in Jannah? Are you going to rejoice with one another and say, Allah has saved us? Or are you going to fail and be alone by yourself? No family members, no friends, running away from everybody and being placed in the hellfire. This is what Allah says, take this seriously. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. When Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, He's talking to you. He's not saying, Ya Zayd, or Ya Abdullah, or Ya Khalid. He's talking to all of us, personalizing us. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Ku anfusakum. Save yourself. Alone. Wa ahlikum. And your family. Now.
بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الكريم ونفرح في من آيات وذكر الحكيم قولوا قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم رسالة الكريم فاستغفروا إن الله غفور رحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد the school holidays are nearly over but it's not the last school holiday and it's not the shortest school holiday there's going to be more that's going to come and there's going to be longer ones that are going to come and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ni'matan magboon fiha kathir min al-nas two things great virtues that's given to every single one of us but we are very negligent in it as-sihha wal-firaq what you do with your health and what you do with your free time and this connects to what we were talking about before. Are you a responsible adult over your children? Are you a responsible child with your parents? Are you using your time properly so that you will be saved from the hellfire and you will be having given guidance in the dunya? Ibn al-Qayyim said, quoting on his feet, he said, losing your time, your free time, is worse than death. If you sit there for one hour, two hours on your phone, watching TV, listening to music, going to places which are haram, this is worse than death. How? He said, if you die, you get split away from the dunya and its people, but you are going back to your Lord. Everlasting bliss. But if you lose that one hour, two hours, or three hours, you're not going to get it back. And that time where you could have planted seeds of goodness has gone. And what you are also doing is you're leaving your deen and you're leaving your dunya. So sometimes it's better if a person is using his time properly for him to die than rather waste his time. And one of the biggest causes of failure on the day of judgment, the munafiks will come and the kuffar will come. They will not say we failed because we didn't have enough wealth or we didn't have enough houses or we didn't wear the nicest of clothes. They will not say that. On the day of judgment when they see the hellfire in front of them they will know that the biggest failure in their life was because of the way they spent their time. They, say, they will say, Rabbi Rji'un, Allah, send me back. Please, I'm begging you, send me back. So that I can use my time to do good deeds. Their biggest regret is time. And Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, said that you will be successful as an adult as a child, and in the dunya, and in the akhirah, if you see your time and your life as a matter of minutes and hours. The one who fails, who sees his life as a matter of years and decades. If you think you're going to live another 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you will not be successful. If you think tomorrow is your last day, this salah is going to be malaf salah, then you will use the time properly. You will use every single moment Correctly, because every single second that gets pushed by, it's gone. You're being pushed forward, the books are closed. That second that you had a, a second ago is gone. The chance to use that second for khayr is gone, it's never going to come back. You will never be able to grow it back. And I'll leave you with one last thing, my brothers. Is that the Quran over and over again has said that we have made. We have given the sun, we have made the sun for you. We have made the moon for you. We have made the sky, the earth, the water, the mountains for us. For Bunny Adam, for me and you. So as someone can look in the sky and say, look at this huge object, why is it there? Allah has given the answer. This sun has been made here for us. So I want to ask you a question. What if it wasn't there tomorrow? What if the creator of all creation, the one who created the sun, took away the sun tomorrow, took away the earth tomorrow? You come out of bed, there's no earth. There's no sky protecting you from space. That's going to happen one day. My brothers, it's not our imagination, it's reality. So Allah has given us and honored us with the earth and the sun and the moon. And he says in one of the ayat in the Quran as to why. Allah says in the Quran, He has made the night and the day for you. Khilfatan liman arada, khilfatan liman arada, 
He has made it subservient to you. The day happens because of you. The night happens because of you. So that you can ponder and fulfill your heart with iman and intellect and, and hidayah and yaqeen and Allah and you give shukr and you worship Allah during these days and these nights. So to conclude, my brothers, take your life seriously. Take your childhood seriously. Take your role as a parent seriously. Create a good attachment between yourself with Allah and then your family with Allah. And if you do this, you'll be successful in the akhirah. And if you do this correctly, you will use your time correctly. And those people who will fail are those people who are completely disconnected with Allah, disconnected with what's happening in their family's lives, disconnected with their wanting in the akhirah. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar Allahumma atina nufusina taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayr man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaha Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa zukna tiba'a wa arina al-batila batila wa zukna ishtinaba Allahumma hablana min azwajina wa thurriyatina qurrata ayun wa jalna li muttaqina imama Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen